I just think that you should think that every decision is right. And I think most people think every decision is wrong. Mm. Like most people just go into like, did I make the right decision? They, there's just this unbelievable ability to beat oneself up, to be cynical, to be pessimistic, to be fear-based. And I'm just trying to get people to flip it because life is actually how it plays out in your head. It just actually is. Like I, my ability to turn every negative into a positive is very real. And, and I watched many people taking positives and turning into negatives. It's very real. Life is a perspective game and we need to have more positive optimism. The end. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy. Don't you wanna be happy? Uh, I am ready to get into it. So Dustin, if you want to get the first question going here, I am ready to go. Big shout out to uh, Brandon Britton, who's with us. Oh, there we go. Leon, what is good, my man? Good morning. Hey, Gary. Good morning. Yeah, good to be on with you. Have some tea? Thank you. Love it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, my question is, uh, what uh, do you think a number three or number four person in the business should uh, should look like? in terms of putting themselves out there and getting themselves known. Uh, Cause I'm in a bit of that spot right now where I'm like falling out of love of like uh, social media coaching for businesses. So um, I'm just trying to switch myself. Out of and, that. and, and you're, you, you know, for everybody who's watching who doesn't understand what Leon's referring to, what you've heard from me, Leon is, Hey, there's a lot of people that could be great. Number twos, threes, fours, five, six, sevens, who could quote unquote, make more money being a number six at Vayner media than they would have as being a number one in whatever hustle or business that they've started for themselves. And so you're saying you've been doing coaching, consulting and things of that nature. And now you want to produce content to give you leverage to be hired as a number three or four. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I feel I feel that way because I've been trying to do it myself, and like I don't mm -hmm. I don't like you don't enjoy it enough. Yeah, like I don't get I get, a, I get up excited every morning about it. You know what I mean? I totally get it, and I think you know it's one of the things that I'm talking about that I'm most proud of because I'm I'm trying to create permission and self awareness to not have to be an entrepreneur in a world where if you're under forty, it almost feels like you have to be, which is crazy. It's almost like become like entrepreneurship's almost become like school and college everyone thinks you have to mm -hmm. so a couple of things um the first thing i'd probably do is make a list of the 25 businesses and 25 entrepreneurs you most admire if you can even make a list that big because one of the things you can consider is spending a couple of weeks just analyzing those businesses obviously if you've been an entrepreneur um or doing your own thing it's likely for you to be a three and four in probably a company that's probably between 50, 25, maybe to a hundred people. You're not going to go be number three or four at Amazon or Netflix or BMW. Yeah. Right. So, so you probably want to focus on the entrepreneur <clears throat> in the sector that you most enjoy. Um, and yeah. then there's two things to do. One, you really analyze their business and you start putting out content about Manny's, pizza shop or Vayner Media or, or, you know, whatever the company is, you start actually making content, like literally like analyzing their social media and saying, you know, you know, literally on LinkedIn, you, the title is, you know, three things I see uh, the, the grapefruit shop can fix on mm -hmm. social media, literally. So that's one way. The other way is to literally write an email to, you know, dear Sally Thompson, I've admired your business from afar for a long time. I love video game, you know, tchotchkes and you do it better than anybody else. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. If there's anything I can ever do pro bono, uh, please let me know. That's one version, that's asking. The other version is the email that is similar to the blog post. Dear Sally Pants, you know, have always loved your esports trinket business. Uh, you know, with Corona, I've had some time on my hands. I spent the last half a week analyzing your social. Below are seven things that I would highly recommend you pay attention to that can make your social media pre uh, profile better. No mm -hmm. ask, no anything. Just like thank you so much. If there's anything I can ever help you with in the future, uh, please hit me back. Love you, Leon. Those three tactics against the human are the things that will work. Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, you, Leon.
Thank get you, on man. it. First, right. first figure out who you admire. It's okay to take a month right now and try to consume a ton of entrepreneurs and a ton of small businesses. Where do you live? In Montreal in Canada. Love it. There's a lot of interesting creative stuff going on in Montreal. If you don't want to leave that area, you should really do homework. Mm -hmm. homework. Thanks, man. Yeah, gotta I'm going to be going in the vegan market. <laughs> Love that. There's a, yeah. th that's where your passion is? Yeah, I'm really interested in that stuff and I'm putting out more content about food and chefs and vegan chefs a, and stuff. There's a ton of vegan startups, direct to consumer vegan brands that I'm sure your social media consulting and coaching can help is similar to where I told you to audit their page and then DM them or email them. Awesome. Take care. Thanks so much, Gary. You too. Yeah, of course, Leon. Uh, if you are on and sharing, there we go, David. And in Sangwell, very good job. Kim Noonley, very good. I'm going to share you, Kim, and give you the follow. Boom, Kim. The big fucking follow for Kim. Nate Gaines, big follow for him. Nate, I am now your 882nd follower. Hello, my man. Hey. Um, first off, I want to say thank you. You provide a lot of good content. And even though I haven't um, needed to follow it for like, two years i've been consuming it for two years and it's very motivating and all that thank you what's your name my friend uh, i'm con con and where are you from yeah um I, I was born in greece but i've grown up in australia since i was like three i love it nice to meet you con thank you nice to meet you too um okay so is it all right if i give some content context first before my question it is yes, so i'm it a little is, bit sir. nervous I'll, I'll, Don't worry. I'll eventually get around my words i'm okay. sure go um, ahead so pretty much I'm in my second year of university or co like equivalent of college, yep. you guys know. Yep. Um, I'm doing sports and exercise science and my goal is that eventually I want to work in high performance sport. Um, recently I started, a, about a month ago, I started branding myself a lot more. I started my Instagram, started my, um, I've got a website now, LinkedIn and all that. Um, and pretty much I want to share who I am and what I'm learning and all that. But um, what, like what I've been wondering is just how I can provide more valuable considering that I am a younger, more experienced, uh, inexperienced coach. Cause I see all of the content that other more experienced people are putting out. It's like, I don't, I don't know where my place is really, you know? Your place is in hypotheses and opinions because what you don't have is experience yet right? And yeah. you don't have the leverage of results from athletes, right? And so mm -hmm. you're in a very similar place to where I was when I first walked into the wine library, which was, I had ideas. I'm sure you have ideas of and hypotheses and opinions. But right now, to your point, you know, where a lot of 22 year olds, 20 year olds, 18 year olds get caught is they think only expertise can bring leverage to business and what they end up doing is they fake it until they make it and they start talking about shit that they don't know about and 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 what i mean by that is it's one thing con if you say hey if your video is literally like this hey you know i can't wait to eventually try out this thesis but something that's been on my mind is if people use ice and heat three hours before or or if they eat you know I would share ideas. A, most people don't like to share ideas because they think people will steal them. And I don't think people understand that the world is abundant. Plus, if you put it out on the internet first, it's almost like you own it. It can't really necessarily be stolen. Uh, number two, you don't have any other choice, Khan. Until you have you know, clients, until you have 15 years of experience, you don't. And so yeah. the, the thing that you have to do for sure, there's a lot of things that you don't have to do, but the one thing you have to do is be very careful not to make things up or fake it till you make it. I see this every day, 20 year old life coaches, 20 year old this, 20 year old that. And they just, and I understand, I have empathy for them. They're, they're just kind of almost lying, bullshitting, uh, embellishing, tricking uh, to seem like an authority when they're not. And that will never work in the end. It might work short term. You might get something out of it in the short term, but long term, you always get exposed. So for me, what you need to do is document the journey of becoming who you're going to become. And that's more talking about frustrations, 
talking about trying out some theories on your friends because real athletes won't let you, talking about ideas you have, uh, doing green, you know how I have this green screen right now, this T set up, you know, you do it, you know how you see on TikTok people making content over other people's videos. Maybe you start sharing your opinions on other people's videos. There's a lot of ways you can go about it, but the number one mistake, the common mistake, the thing I see 90% of the time of kids in this position, they start making up shit and they always will get caught on that. Well, I think um, what you're saying makes sense. And I think that it would be good just like, like even going forward, just having a backlog of this is what I've done. This is what I see. Like what you're saying makes sense. Um, I think the other bit that I get caught on is if I should even be bothering trying to share and trying to promote myself so much now, whether it's- You should, I'll tell you why. Would you, okay. Because one day you're gonna be 81 and it's gonna be so powerful, that video for your 16 year old great grandson. Yeah. So you think that that's it's worth why. it still? Cause, cause the, yeah, cause the Con. place I'm coming from is just, Con. I don't know if it's, yeah. It's worth it for you, the human being. Maybe not worth it for you, the business, sports business side yet. Yeah. You'll be, you know how, I'm at my parents' house. Do you know how sad I am? I don't have pictures of me at baseball card shows. Yeah. I'm devastated. I wish I had them. I wish I had mm -hmm. pictures of me at the lemonade stand. I wish I had a video of me washing cars, shoveling snow. The reason you need to do it is for your great grandchildren and for yourself one day to look back on, not to convert yeah. business. Do you understand? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And by the way, what, yeah. what if what if God willing you become one of the great players in your field and they have to make a documentary about you, the video will be really good for the documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, take it from okay, me. That's one, one, one day you're not going to have that much hair, so it'll be nice to have video with that much hair. <laughs> yeah, come on. That's it. Think of, think of it in the macro, not in the micro. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um. And I, by I, the I, way, real quick, one last thing. Yep. And, God willing, by accident, you make you may make one video that resonates with millions of people. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah, because. I think the thing is I, I enjoy it. It's just, I was having trouble justifying it to myself. Great, because if yeah. you enjoy it, I just gave you very clear black and white yeah. justifications. Yeah, okay. Can I ask one more quick question? Please. Going off of the document over create kind of a thing that you're saying that I should be following, um, regarding LinkedIn, what I currently do is I only post when I get a longer form post, like a blog post on my blog. And then I share that to LinkedIn also. Do you think that just shorter form, like this is what I've done this week? Try it. it. Try it. Okay. Try it. Okay. I'm not sure, but try it. Okay. The, the answer, what's great about the internet and that everybody fucks up is trying it and getting back the feedback after 10 times of doing the short thing. This is what I did this week and it's not working is more valuable than debating it or asking an, an expert. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Take I really care, appreciate friend. the Happy to do Thank it. you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, let's go back to Twitter before we go. There's Amanda Lambert. Amanda, you get a follow. Amanda, I am your 150th follower. Uh, Remy, my good friend Remy's in the building. Sandra Kohler. It's time for Sandra to get a follow. She's such a hardcore community member. Devin Alexander is always in the mix. I love that. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Gary. How are you? Good. I've been following you for a long time. So this is really exciting to talk to you. Thank you. Um, Where are you from? I'm from Florida. So awesome. Gainesville, Florida. Um, awesome. So my question to you is, I mean, just a little background. I'm a branding and web designer. Uh, most of my clients are, they're kind of all over the world. Uh, most of them are creatives, probably 70% photographers, the rest creatives, uh, artists, things like that. Um, I've been doing this for coming on 12 years. So I feel like my business is in so a good place. you started when you were six? <laughs> I'm actually 36 years old. I look 12. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it'll help when I'm 50. So, exactly. um, so, I've been, I, so I have 12 years experience. I feel like I have a lot of value to offer. Um, but I just, I love what I do so much. 
that I'm always I'm, like, I'm hearing all these voices of like, Oh, you should do a course or to offer value. And I know there's a lot I can offer, but I, I just love what I do and I don't want to do anything else. <laughs> so I feel well, like good, good news. You've won. Yeah. But I feel like, am I, am I doing a disjustice to other designers that I can teach things? Like, I just don't feel like, I don't think, I don't, th I don't think, I don't think that that's really necessarily where your energy is coming from. It's probably coming from your logical entrepreneurial brain and other voices that you're leaving money on the table, yeah. not that you're not helping. Uh, if that's the case, you wouldn't sell the course. Like for example, my great like want, what's pulling at my heartstrings is to be the most helpful entrepreneur to other entrepreneurs in the history of entrepreneurship, which mm -hmm. is why I don't have masterminds and courses. It's why I put out everything for free. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I think to your point, and I can feel the energy, you know that there's some business opportunity there. It's more quote unquote scalable but you just don't give a shit. And good news, Les, you're just like me. I fucking can make so much more money than I make. I just don't want to. I want to be happy, yeah. not have yeah. more money. Yeah. I mean, I'm enjoying that I am making a little more money good. now because it's taken 12 years to get here. That's but right. But like, can't I just, I just want to, I don't need to make a million dollars. Like, that's right. I'm good. We just bought the house we've always wanted. We, you know, like we're in a good place. Um, do I do want to travel more, so I need yeah. more for my travel jar. But well, what you, what you might be able to do then is why don't you put out free zooms and free live streams, which will build up your personal brand. It's all free, which will probably lead to invites to give some speeches. I've been able to travel the world and not pay a dime, so you might be able to get you know places. To, you know, at first, the first at first, my offers were we'll pay for your travel you know, back in 09, when I started speaking, yeah. I, I think that's, that would be a home run for you. If somebody reaches out to you from Australia and is like, we'll pay for your travel. Can you come and speak? You got, you would like hang up and dance all over the building. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, would. so I think there's a way for you to do that as well, which is to start putting out more free content. And, and when I say content, one of the things I need to talk about more is put out more free access. You know, what I'm doing right now is the most valuable right? The yeah. most valuable. I mean, like yeah. people, people buy 50, 60, $80,000 one hour lunches with me through charity things that I do, you know, like this one-on-one -on -one time is, is something people want and, and I'm doing it right now for free, you know? Right. And so you can do that as well. Let a, create access to you, Facebook lives, you know, Instagram lives, uh, Zooms. And then, and then I think that will lead to demand for you to speak and that will scratch your travel. Um, the answer is don't listen to your husband. Don't listen to your best friend. Don't listen to some of the experts that you follow on Instagram. You do not have to start a course because it's more scalable, make more money. You have to follow what makes you happiest and you yeah. are clearly in tune with that. And so I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I do love what I do. And I'm always like preaching it to other people. Like if you hate your job, just you have quit. to try. Like, that's what you just have to try. You have to try. Yeah. And everybody goes, everyone, most people are fear-based. So they're like, how am I going to pay the rent and this and that? And I keep reminding people, quit your job in parallel with quitting your lifestyle. Actually sell your home and your right. car and your fancy handbags and sneakers and go rent an apartment and then quit. Happiness over everything. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Lesson, I think my friends are sick access. of me telling them. <laughs> Less. Yeah. Access. access. Do some streams. Okay. You're going to stumble on somebody who's throwing a conference, who's going to pay for you to travel. And then you'll figure out if you're good at speaking in front of groups. Yeah. And if you, if you are, you'll travel the whole world. Awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you so much, Gary. You. You're welcome. Les. Bye. Bye. All right. Back to Twitter. If you are not sharing screenshots of this on your Twitter, you're making a huge mistake because you are missing out on some epic following. Um, which I think you should not do that. Crystal, big shout out to you. you. I am your 55th follower. Look at this crew. I mean, dressed up, looking sharp. Kilby, how are you? Doing well, Gary, how are you? Good, and what's your name? <laughs> I'm Amada Zetra Brown. I'm Kilby Brown. And we, we are, are the Property, Property Heads New, New York, York City, City team. team. Real estate <laughs> agents from New York, Gary. How are you? Very nice, I'm, I'm really from well. Brazil. Very nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Too. Really excited. Thanks for having us today. Sure. So uh, we live in New Jersey. We do real estate in Manhattan. 
been following you for a few years. Honestly, I think a few months ago, you told us to stop following you and just do it. Um, I think that was your message for a while. So I did stop following you, but I'm back in. And I guess my question is, we've been doing this about three years. I left a W-2 playing job, you know, making six figures. I haven't quite made it where I needed to be yet on real estate. Now we're shut out. We can't meet clients, can't do open houses, can't cold call, can't do anything. So I need a reset. And I'm going to use this time amongst many things to do a reset in my business. So what are your ideas as a real estate, um, for real estate agents? We are marketing to hats. We do hats on beds, hats in our videos. That's our thing. Hats all over, hats all over Manhattan. I love it. Um, I'm active on LinkedIn. I, I have Instagram. I started TikTok. I have Facebook, um, all Instagram. sorts of stuff. So have what are you, your thoughts now? I, let me throw some random things at you. Number one, um, have you have you considered starting a Facebook group for tri-state uh i would call it the tri-state real estate group where real estate agents real estate brokers you know just just a community one of the biggest things i believe in is throw the party you know i have two groups right now tell me about your manhattan group so i can do i can change the Mm tri-state it's less about that how active are you in there and who are you letting in there um one we, we one we just Sort of like two weeks ago, that was really just potential clients. The second one we took over from a guy who were, who's helping us, that's open to agents. That's open to everyone, I believe. I think intent really matters, Kilby. So what I'm trying to do is get you to be the Pied Piper, the Gatsby, the person that throws the party. Mm-hmm. And even if people in there are doing more real estate transactions and there may be times where you look at each other and say, why do we listen to Gary? Uh, There's these other real estate agents that are part of these groups that are also taking the business from the people that are in this group that have potential clients. I still believe that in the macro, being the person that has the number one tri-state real estate group as the host or hostess will turn out to be ROI beneficial in a two, three year period. What that requires is the intent of you when you have that group is for you to actually be a host, not you threw them all there just to sell them a property. That's okay. a very different mentality. It leads to very different words and very different thoughts coming out of your mouth. So one of the things that I think most, you know, my sister's a real estate agent in New Jersey, so Mm -hmm. I've gotten closer to it. One of the biggest mistakes that I think real estate agents make is they don't market, they don't bring value, they are salespeople, right? And so to me, every time since I spoke at the first Inman Connect in like 2010, my first Inman Connect in Mm -hmm. 2010 or 11, I kept saying, be the mayor of your town, be the newspaper of your town. You know, what I would do if I were you right now is I would think about all the businesses that are struggling in Manhattan as well. I would probably reach out on Twitter and Instagram and DM and on LinkedIn and DM uh, restaurant and other owners in Manhattan and interview them how they're getting through the storm and then post these interviews on Facebook. Because in Manhattan, what may happen is you may make, you may interview the one chef who cries during the interview, who's a famous New York chef. That's the interview that gets picked up by ABC News. It's the interview that gets a million views on Facebook. Even with your incredibly intriguing, quirky style, you'll be memorable. Um, you'll, I think it's about content. It's about content. I've been consistent about this, Gilby, as you know, but the reality is it's the intent behind the content. I want you to be thinking that you're CNN, that you're the New York Post, that you're Bloomberg. You need to be thinking about how do I bring value to this restaurant owner? And even though, and, and the reality is a lot of people are sitting home and willing to do interviews right now. You'll be able to make some friendships, but you have to convert. And I believe every real estate agent Will she and he will achieve their best when they convert into being a news organization, not a salesman. Mm-hmm. I really believe that. And so I believe like, you know, I believe that people need to interview their principals, their superintendents, their, uh, the, the owners of the businesses that have been there a long time. I think this uh, advice works even better for people in smaller towns than Manhattan, mm-hmm. but 
but I, st but I still know it works in Manhattan. And on the flip side, there's no small town interview that's gonna get national coverage. But if you get the right chef or the right barber with the right thing and your tiny little audience on Facebook and you post it and it starts with 13 views, the way Facebook and YouTube work is you can wake up and it has a million views. I think you should quadruple down on interviews and stories. I think, you know, I've said it a bunch of the last couple of days. I'm sure maybe you've picked up on this. I think the two of you need to tell the story of, if you made five different videos on why you quit a six figure job, W2, like, and when I hear hasn't gotten there yet, there's a lot of power in your stories, Kilby. You, you can help a lot of people and you can, you can get people emotionally attached to your story. I think you need to go into story time and newscaster time. That's what I would do. And it doesn't matter whether all, all platforms, you just matter all platforms. Platform. All platforms. Post them, post them everywhere, right? Like, you know, I'm doing this with T with Gary Vee. Yeah. The videos are about to, sh you know, this little clip will show up on Instagram, will show up on LinkedIn, will show up on Facebook, will show up on Twitter. All produce the video and then distribute it in all different platforms. And the only difference is you might title it a little different. You might add some words that are a little different. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a LinkedIn crowd is a little different than a TikTok yeah. crowd. You may, you might write copy that associates the video a little bit different but distribute everywhere. You never want to not give yourself a chance to be discovered. Okay. One question, besides the, outside the, the, the head, so we also yes. like to dance. So I also teach Brazilian dance, we dance swing. So we also use TikTok. dance. Huh? TikTok. TikTok. TikTok's a huge opportunity for you. Okay, so it's just make video dancing, make videos. If you two made TikTok, if you two did the trending dance every day on TikTok, I guarantee somewhere in the next year, one of those will go viral. And that may lead to somebody who lives in Brooklyn, in Bushwick, clicking on your profile, seeing that you do real estate, and then emailing you because they're moving into the city. That's how it actually works. That is how it works. So keep the heads, keep the dance, keep the energy. Keep, of course, keep the hats and dance because you guys like that. Uh, exactly. What are we doing here, right? You know, obviously <laughs> we want to reach, uh, we want to reach our financial goals for our stability and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, how you make your money is more important than how much you make. And the hats and the dancing is part of your two souls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More, great more, more content. Thank, yes. What were you going to say, Kilby? I would say great. Thank you very much. Great job yesterday, also with your father. Really nice. Oh, thank you. Very much. Yes. Yes. I wanted to drink wine in the middle of the afternoon too. I, was, uh, <laughs> I waited Jealous. a little bit, but it was really great. Really great to see you yeah. with your father. Kilby, you better sign up for Wine Text. My dad needs it. It's a great service if you buy wine. It's crazy good. Okay, oh, I will. Man, I will. Man. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 It's a good feed for everybody. If you buy wine on the internet, winetext.com. Today we are selling a fifty-two dollar Pinot Noir for twelve, like half price. Like, it's just ridiculous. Great plant trainers. Thank you so much. Celestina, Blended Collective, CBS Group, Yogi. Gary, thank you so much for having me on, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Love your show and sending me good vibes. So thank you so thank much you, for this. Thank you. L little, little over. Oh, you're welcome. Little overview about me. I started an Instagram back in 2016 to make fun of yoga. I, I didn't have a yoga practice, just to make fun of yoga, and it yoga ended up changing my life. And now I have like a yoga brand. I teach yoga, and I, I, I post everywhere, like Facebook, TikTok, you know just every, everywhere because of you. So I appreciate like everything you said, everything you do. My friend Pedro told me to, um, told me to, to listen to you. I and mean, you literally changed my life. I got out of $30,000 of debt because I sold my house and I moved in with my in-laws for like four or five months. So that like four or yeah. five months was tough, but it, it set my whole future up so much better with like my side hustle business and everything like that. So thank you so much for that. So, yo, so Brian, you literally heard me talk about that theory. It sat in your head and you decided to do it. I did. Yeah. It sat in my head and I, I was like really playing with the fears of like, man, judgment. you know, the judgment. Judgment. And, uh, I'm 38 years old and like I just got married too last year. So it's like the judgment. I'm so like, pr Brian, what are we so, gonna say? I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll, you know how much I, I appreciate you. 
you know how much courage it takes to do that move, but I'm so more proud of you because right now people can sense your happiness with it. And so yes. many people have to sell their home and move in with their in-laws They have and with the, their friends. They don't realize it's, it's a huge coup. It's a huge coup if you can't afford your lifestyle to reset a little humility. Yeah. And by the way, I have no idea how much you like or don't like your in-laws, but one of the things that people don't realize, and I've gotten some of these emails, going back in with their parents or their best friend or their in-laws or the co one guy went in with their high school coach, also those three, four, five, six months have been a lot of fun for a lot of people because they got closer to people that they like. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was a great time, and in-laws are awesome. They had a pool, so it was during the summer. We got to <laughs> swim a lot, so, yeah, yeah, it was like a, a little uh, vacation. How did, how, did your in -laws, money, so. how did your in-laws think about it? Were, were they practical and like, hey, Brian, that's really, like, did they view it as a, did they also see it as like, wow, good on you that you had the courage to do oh, it? Oh, yeah. Did they judge? Yeah, super supportive, super supportive. They didn't judge. They enjoyed yeah, us like, being there. So we, we had a good time. And then it was just time. We live in an apartment now. So it's of course. money. And now we're waiting to possibly buy a house when this whole thing of course. goes over. And yeah, of it's, course. it's just a, such a big, uh, a big relief off my shoulder. And it, I was just able to focus, you know, more on just my brand and what I want to do. Because I, um, I work at a bank on my day job. And like, I'm, I'm literally like, go, go, go every minute outside my day job even i'm like if i'm walking down the hall whatever and like i'm on my phone trying to respond back to people and that was uh my question that i had today is you know i'm making all this content i love to make people laugh especially in the yoga community uh that's like my passion i, I love to be an entertainer i love to make people laugh especially right now i feel like as a creator i have a responsibility to make people laugh and just kind of get them out of this rut um but especially since I've been home and I make content, I try to respond back to everyone's DMs and just build that community. How do you have any advice on managing just being on my phone so much? Like, do you like, for example, do you like batch your text or do you only go on Instagram at certain times of the day? Like, how do you balance? Because I, I feel like I'm at a, at a, almost crossing the line of cell phone addiction too, just because I have a, a wife, I have a son. I don't think, so I don't think you have, I don't think you have cell phone addiction. I think you have addiction to your passion. Yeah. Oh, nice. You know, the cell phone <laughs> just happens to. Morning, guys. I love you. I love you the most. Say hello. It's okay. Say hello. hello. Morning. 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 Sasha, what's up? I signed um, up for wine Brian, text from for my wife. Oh, she loves wine. Brian so. just said he signed so, up for wine text. Uh, he's yeah, in my. Um, I've got headphones. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, You're welcome. Brian. You don't have addiction to your phone. You have addiction to what's on the other side. The phone is an empty pipe. Mm. And so, and if you're feeling guilt that you want to spend a little more time with the fam, then that's on you. That's not the okay. phone. The, yeah. It's not the phone. It's what's on the other side of the phone. People have it so confused. Everyone's like, you're addicted to your phone. No, you're not. You're addicted to your friends that you talk to. About. Yeah. You're addicted to the phone. No, you're not. You're addicted to watching funny videos. You're, on, you're always on your phone. No, you're not. You're addicted to, you know, your business. So, I, I think you're addicted to the right thing, uh, your awesome. passion on the side hustle. Don't demonize yourself because okay. you're on the phone. Because you know what? That's another judgment for society. Society mm. judges people to sell their home and go and live with their in-laws. You have just felt the benefits of that. Society judges people on their phone, but they don't realize what's happening on the other phone. You're making people happy on the other side. Yes, that's, that's true. I'm, I'm that's, proud yeah. of you. I don't look down on you. I look up at you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for getting me on TikTok. I love TikTok and uh, just, I love consuming the content and like it, it, yeah, it really blows up pretty fast on there. You know, my, sure my whole does. like brand, like transformed. Now I'm like doing cussing yoga videos and like, it just yes. totally yes. transformed. So I appreciate that. And Brian, you I overthought it though. I overthought TikTok. I started in July and I kept deleting videos. Like I kept, I'm like, this it's is not going to do good. I kept deleting videos. Doesn't matter. Not doing good is it's time that everybody realizes that I get more enjoyment from my content that doesn't do well than the reverse. Not mm. doing well is not bad. Not doing well is a gift. It shows you, and it gives you data on something. It lets you know that something might not be working, especially after you do the same thing 50 times. After one time, you can't just think it's not doing well. And you have to have the confidence to let somebody come on your page and see that you only had 37 views. Mm. Yeah, uh, yes, 100%. Have you started 100%. a Facebook group? We, we have, we actually do, um, me and my friend Pedro, who uh, turned me yep, on to you, me about, yep. we, we have a, we have a podcast, the Yogi Show podcast, we have a Facebook group there, like we're all okay. in, all in, Good. 
all right. on Facebook, all on everywhere. I just do, I do what you tell me. So I appreciate going, that. And, I, and it took me like a year, year for me to like hear someone That's say right. that. Like That's just right. do That's what right. Gary does and you're going to blow up. So I appreciate, appreciate you so much. Thank you, you for having me on here. Have a great day. Great Love day, you, man. Brian. Proud of you. Listen, that, you. that had everybody that had a huge piece of content in it, which is the bottom line is I'm telling you, um, if you don't understand the step back on selling your home, if you can't afford it, if you can't afford it, um, it is one of the great moves in our society and I hope more people do it. Proud of Brian. Did you just see the happiness and the confidence in his eyes? Unbelievable. Jen, how are you? Hi Gary, nice to see you. Um, so my, my name's Jennifer Dalton. I live in East Meadow, New York. Um, I just want to start off by saying thank you for this once in a life opportunity. Um, I loved your video yesterday with your dad. Um, I was laughing. It was amazing. And it reminded me a lot of my relationship with my father and how, you know, I've been in the kitchen with him since I'm four years old, breaking off the ends of string beans and just building that worth ethic that is like so valuable. Um, so I love your Tea with Carrie V show. Um, this past year, I had a pretty challenging year um, where I, a lot of the stuff that people were saying resonated with me. I mean, I had to move out of my home. I traded in my fancy BMW, moved back with my parents. I haven't paid my bills in about a year um, due to some hardships. And before qu quarantine, I was working three part-time jobs. And what I learned is that I love connecting with people. I love people. I love the different groups of people. Um, and my dream is to open up a coffee shop where I could build I that, that like community, community. Yeah. and have like speakers come in and have events and have an experience, teach cooking, you know, like. And Jen, uh, Jennifer, yeah. on that front, also debate if it want, if you want it to be a coffee shop, because that's a very kind of like competitive sector. And I see a lot of people who want to connect with people and have a hub default into coffee shop. Just after this call, play with the idea of, should it be an arcade? Should it be a hand curated bookstore? Should it be a juice store? Should it be tea? Should it be orange juice? Maybe it's string, maybe it's string bean, maybe it's a soup store. Like, be, I love the idea. Don't just default into coffee shop. A lot of people are doing that. Uh, now, coffee might be the right one for you, but I love the idea for people that love connecting with people that are extroverted and want a clubhouse and build a business around it. I just want to make sure, I actually think some people out there like you actually have a better idea in them, but they don't think that, like, for example, they don't think they can open a grapefruit store, right? Where you sell grapefruits, where you sell grapefruit juice. But meanwhile, it was their grandma and their favorite drink. And with that passion, they'll stand out more and do even better selling grapefruit, grapefruit t-shirts, like than they would have in a coffee shop because they don't realize, yes, there might be 10 times more people that want coffee than grapefruit, but there's 12 coffee shops to divide that demand. Whereas with grapefruit, there isn't a single grapefruit store around. So just also keep in mind that there might be something unique for you to do as well. Just something to keep in mind, keep going. Beautiful. Yeah, I was thinking like, especially with everyone being home and maybe some jobs like getting used to being at home, people are gonna want a place to come and do their work and maybe rent out like rooms where people could, you know, do club, that. Club, clubhouses, clubhouses will always work. Yeah, like that third place environment. That's um, right. So like, I also love what you do. And I love, I, I feel like I've been through quite a bit in my life to where I could connect with people on a very deep level. And I was wondering if you were me, like what would you do to explore that focus, like energy? and that focus. Meaning you want to build a community and, and talk with oh, people? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I would do what I did, you know, in 2009, in 2006, I started, in 2006, I started doing it with wine. And then in 2009, I started doing it with business. It's literally as simple as making videos and putting them out on the internet. Back then that was Vidler, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, MySpace, right? Today, it's a slew of things from TikTok to LinkedIn to other places. But what's really crazy, Jennifer, is 
the, the, it's very obvious what it is. It is content. It's a podcast. It's a YouTube show. It's, it's one-off videos. It's starting with six people that are your friends and, you know, and then it builds from there. It's really as simple as that. There is nothing too crazy to the strategy. The crazy part to the strategy is the ability to execute. So I've been hosting wellness events like every month and I rent out a storefront and then I have like 10 to 12 people come in That's and awesome. just try, try out film different it? things. Uh, no. Good. So next one you do, have a friend, film it. Literally, li everyone's like, but then what this? Literally, and on the iPhone if they have to. You should absolutely film it because that's content. Maybe you getting somebody to try something or you saying something to somebody that's there is the video that starts your career. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You're Amazing. welcome. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Jennifer. Have a great day. Have a great day. Ciao. My friends, everybody, just like with Jennifer right now, it is documenting. Like, do not do anything that's public without it being filmed. And then chop it up and post-produce it and put it out in the world. Simple as that. Simple as that. I'm good. I'm good. Nice having me in the live. Thank you very much. It's an honor. You're welcome. Where are you from? I am from Greece. Very nice. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Um, I have two questions for you, so I will give you a bit of uh, context for both of them. The first one is, um, I am in the university right now, I'm studying computer engineering, and I had a really rough start with my university. But after a personal journey, I found my pace and I have a plan and I executed to graduate. My question is this, I am 26 years old right now and I have, I really feel I stayed behind in that department and uh, I would like uh, some advice on how to boost my resume and convince others that I have a lot to offer and I am very passionate about learning and working. I think the answer is less about boosting your resume and it's mm -hmm. more about asking more people. So I see a lot of people who feel insecure about their resumes, whether they're behind, they didn't go to the best school. And I always laugh because I always say to them, you don't understand. It's not about having the best resume. It's about asking the most people for a job. So to me, you have more than a good enough resume for one to 500 businesses in the world right now, right now. It's just that you have to submit your resume and you have to reach out to them and apply. So, so many people are in their head worrying and dwelling that it's, they're behind. Instead, they should be on LinkedIn and reaching out to CEOs and CMOs and CIOs and CTOs in your situation and sending in the resume and saying, I have the most passion, read this resume. All you need is one person to say yes. So it's about quantity with a good, uh... yes, okay. Now, let me, uh, the, gonna, my second gonna tell us, hold on one second. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna finish that because a lot of people are watching because I can see that you got it. It is quantity with upfront context in the first two or three sentences to get them to get excited and then you're on your way. Uh, context in the, not in the resume, in like a motivation letter or something like that. It's, it's, it's if you know you're sending it to, it's if you know you're sending your resume to a video game maker, you make a reference to loving, you know, Zelda when you were a kid, you know, just something to give it a little boost. I see, I see. If you, if you're applying to a company in Poland, you make a reference in the opening email about uh, somebody that you grew up with in Greece who was from Poland, if that's true. You know, you, you give a little, a little flavor to it. I see. Perfect. Thank you very much. My second question is this. Um, I have uh, this entrepreneurship each with my twin brother. And yes, and we are trying to start uh, some side hustling beside our main jobs because it's not enough. And the, our goal is to have uh, financial freedom. And uh, it's I feel like it's in Europe, it's very different than in America. For it example, is. my brother has, uh, has started um, writing and he's uh, really uh, trying to go that way and create, uh, cli uh, have clients and 
create a career out of it. And I was thinking about um, flipping and side hustles doing in Europe. But I understand it's very difficult from America. It's not uh, so easy. That's right. Sell- it's not as easy. It's not there. The websites aren't the same. It's different. And there are regulations that are different. And I was asking if you have any any advice on either going for flipping and if yes, what to study about it because I am ready to do it or some other European related stuff. Flipping is definitely harder in Europe than it is in the US because the websites, the culture, there's a lot of differences. I do see some people in Europe doing very well in flipping by starting an Instagram account and posting their items on Instagram and then people reply and then they meet up and they change it so I, or they ship it. So I've seen some Europeans get some traction on flipping by posting the items on Instagram and oh. that, like literally starting an account that says selling from Greece and just taking a photo and saying $80 for this hat and $4 for this mug. And so I've seen some success like that, but Let's go back to the most important part. It's very important to me. And we talked about it two callers ago with Brian. When I heard you say fa- financial freedom, Penitel, just remember one thing. Financial freedom comes in a lot of forms. It comes in how much you make, but more importantly, it comes in how much you spend. Of course, lifestyle is always relative uh, with the money you make. It, it is. And I think this generation, everybody... 15 to 35 needs a good, good, good reminder that you don't have to buy the most expensive home you can afford, the most expensive car you can afford. Like we need to live a little more humbly because it's going to lead to a lot more breathing room to live with financial freedom. Yes. I, I don't really think I have this kind of uh, problem if you say, um, I really feel the freedom I'm talking about is about doing stuff and having experiences that, I love that. Uh, money won't be the problem. I love that. So, I respect that. So listen, I think the flipping can be done on Instagram. And I think, I think that there's a lot of other things you can consider. Um, I, I think when you have the ability to be a developer like you are, you might be able to develop some stuff on the side that, you know, that people pay $5 a piece for, for a download. Like there's a lot of clever stuff developers can do a little hack that helps people make um, their content better that they pay $2 a month for subscription, low, low cost subscription technology, I think is a very interesting business. Maybe you start something that is like a software that helps people make better TikTok videos and it costs $3 a month. All of a sudden that could be an interesting business. So I would be maybe a side hustle that leans into your natural strength of development. So this goes, this goes more for a macro kind of yes. stuff because mm-hmm. you have to gain the experience and uh, create more quantity. That's right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank it you. Was an honor. Thank you very Thank much. You, All right, Dustin, let's keep this going. Oh, Ryan, what's good? Hey, hey Gary. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm happy to have you, bro. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Uh, I actually had a quick tip for Pantelis because I'm a Please. software engineer. Please. So if, if the company that you're applying for has a public product or API, take a small part of that product and build it and bring it to the interview. Agreed. I've used that a couple of times and it's really good. You know, making, you know, making and doing over talking always works. And that's what you're talking about, Ryan. So I appreciate that. Uh, So my question is, um, so last week I had the idea of selling printed images on toilet paper and I, uh, I contacted a guy who is willing to drop ship them for me. And I started a Shopify store, um, Facebook, Instagram page. And that's as far as I've gotten. Um, I've sold two uh, toilet papers, one to my mom and one to my best friend. So Good start. Good start. I'm, cu- I'm curious um, if you have any advice for what can I do? I I was thinking that Facebook ads or Instagram ads might be a way to try and kick it off, but do you have any advice? I really, I really like Instagram story ads. They're underpriced. They have a functionality when you're like, I mean, literally here's what I would do. I'll just do the whole thing for you. What's up Instagram. It's Ryan. I'm about to tell you something crazy. I've started a toilet paper that we've printed things on. If you want to swipe up to find out more, I know it's crazy. And I know right now toilet paper is kind of like a thing in our culture, but I'm telling you, check it out, swipe up. Now, 
that ad on Instagram stories is gonna cost you so little. And if you target 25 to 29 year olds, you could also do like, what's up Chicago? It's Ryan, I live here too. I'm an entrepreneur that's had an idea last week. This toilet paper has print on it. I know it's crazy. You know, I know there's a shortage of toilet paper, but there's really not. So don't be mad at me. Swipe up if you wanna check it out. That ad, why that ad's interesting is now you target it on the back end, Chicago. You are from Chicago, you created a connection point. Notice how I went right to it in the first three seconds. Every Instagram story ad, you have to win in the first three seconds or you're dead. You know how fast we go through Instagram stories, right? So you holding up the visual of the, of, so you're gonna need a, a role sent to you because obviously you have somebody drop shipping. You holding that up and quickly saying, what's up guys, I'm Ryan from Chicago, like literally. Or I'd probably go this route, Chicago, stand up. It's me, Ryan, you know, like you're really trying to stop people because, but Instagram story ads are super underpriced. The swipe up functionality sends to your Shopify, right? And you could be so targeted with it. And then what you'll learn if Chicago works is you're going to start, where where'd you, did you go to college? For, for two years. Where? Or drop out. DePaul yeah. University. Even better. So you can target by DePaul. You can be like, DePaul, I went to DePaul, like, like you start like really going segmented. You can start, and then you can, by the way, you don't have to be from Chicago to say, hey, Chicago. You can literally be like New York, what's good, you know? So mm -hmm. I think Instagram story ads swipe up to your Shopify are going, it's, and I want you to be in it and like literally just do that ad, it will work. Awesome, I'll do it. Uh, to, me, th to me, that is the number one conversion Shopify tactic sitting there if you hit if you hit the creative, I always want people, no matter how extroverted or introverted they are, to star in the ad because people stop People stop when they see people. Mm -hmm. for, You're just going to make other... laugh. You're like, if you, like, I don't know what, if we can target by humor or humor interest. I don't know if that's still in play. But, like, it's just, like, you got to, there's definitely, I definitely feel like a psychological graph of, like, people that, find things funny would probably resonate with the print, you know, like, I mean, mm -hmm. there's something, there's something clearly there. So my, the first one I did was a Donald Trump toilet paper. So it's just a <laughs> yes. bunch of, so of I would his target, face. I would target Democrats because you wouldn't do as well with Republicans, you know, and that, that's yeah, right. how you do it. Right. And then, and then, and then, you know, then you do the Biden one for the other side and then you do red and like, like there's just like, mm -hmm. there's a lot to do there. So I think, I think that there's a lot of, you'll clearly get a lot of reaction if you run that piece of yeah. creative in New York and California where people skew more liberal than conservative. Like that's gonna, if you can target by California, New York, target by humor interests, you're gonna, you're gonna get some, tra Instagram, I'm telling you right now, now that I hear how polarizing the content is, I would definitely do Instagram story swipe ups eight okay. like today, today. Okay, I have another one that is like COVID-19 health tips. So you can gift someone a toilet paper <laughs> roll with tips on how to keep themselves safe. Um, I think you, I think you understand the creative that will get people to react and buy. I think to your point, you need the marketing strategy to build awareness. I'm getting more confident on the Instagram swipe up ads as you add context. Do I need content on the actual pages of the Facebook, Instagram? Do I need to be posting that? Um, yes, consistently but you don't, too. yes, because you've got to, I mean, look, you should probably post that Donald Trump and COVID post in your feed and tag a bunch of celebrities. Inevitably, somebody's going to respond to that, you know, like, mm -hmm. I would probably, you know, I don't know how many, I don't know what the max tagging is on Instagram. I'm trying to remember if it's 10 or 20 people or 30, whatever, but I'd probably post the same post over and over just tagging 10 liberal celebrities, you know, which the majority okay. are. Um, like literally two, I probably post the same exact post three times a day with 10 to 20 more people tagged. All you, you know, this, all you need is one of them to like repost it and mm -hmm. you're off to the fucking races. Sweet. Sweet. Thanks for the Wish advice. You well, talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Going back to Twitter. First hour getting on the boards here. Uh, Dustin, give me one second. Just want to talk for a second. First hour getting here in the boards. A uh, lot of good advice as well. Uh, this morning, really enjoying it. Really enjoying my mornings with you guys. You know, I'm probably going to be sad when I have to go back to my real life and can't do tea with Gary Vee anymore, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying uh, the moments with you. I really appreciate everybody who's sharing on Twitter. Uh, and I'm just grateful and I hope the advice is helping. I really want to go back to Brian one more time. I hope you saw the joy in that man's 
face, he had the courage to move back in with his in to move in with his in-laws. A lot of you can move in with your grandparents, your uncle, your your mom, your dad, uh, a best friend if they're willing to. There, if we just had more humility in the world and people were willing to take a step back, that goes two steps forward. He had a home. He just got married, but he was thirty thousand in debt, and by selling the home and moving in with his in-laws for four to six months and then moving into apartment, his world is so much happier. And who gives a shit if everybody makes fun of you that you sold your house or thinks you're a loser? Like, fuck them. Like their life has nothing to do with yours and vice versa. So that was just a real powerful one. I've been talking a lot about that concept, uh, trading in your car, like just that stuff. I'm very passionate about that. And, uh, and that's it. So anyway, going back to some of these tea posts real quick. And uh, I'll be ready in a second. Uh, Dustin, Andrew Humphrey, thank you for sharing. Matt, Matt Wilmer, thank you for sharing. Matt, I'm actually going to give you a follower. Matt, I'm your 1630th follower. Um, all right, Dustin, I'm ready. Christian, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very well. Where are you from? I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. This is awesome to be talking to you. <laughs> It's awesome to be talking to you, my friend. What a beautiful country. Oh, yes, it is. And we are under the same quarantine lockdown as most places in the world. So, are, there a, uh, lot of, are there a lot of cases in Jamaica? We're up to 36 this morning. So our government's done a really good job so far of doing containment mm -hmm. and quarantining. Very nice. So um, I have two questions, one kind of general, one more specific. But let me give a little context. Um, I work for a startup insurance company here in Kingston uh, called Iron Rock. And we launched four years ago, listed on the local stock exchange to raise capital, have a very small team, only 14 people. Um, in comparison, the next largest guy has 80 odd, 90 odd um, employees. So we're really, really small and we use technology to, to scale. We've gone from Greenfield, zero dollars of revenue on day one to just about 5 million US dollars a year. In gross revenue so we're not doing bad after four years um my role here is what's I'm what's the what's what's the net revenue on that number do you know yeah the net revenue is about uh well i can do it in j dollars i haven't converted it to us no dollars worries. yeah um so my role here is i'm the general manager in charge of production sales including marketing and my kind of objective is to make iron rock the cool tech insurance company we're small um, typically everybody hates insurance. Insurance is not a real sexy field. Um, you know, it's kind of stodgy stuff, you're very old school. Um, and so we, we want to create content that, that positions us as different, as young, as hip, as the cool tech insurance company. Because we're so small, we outsource all of our uh, social creation to, a, to another small company. It's not done in-house because the team is really small. We're on Facebook and IG. And um, I just finished reading your book, by the way, Jab, 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 Right Hook. And it was awesome. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. But what it showed me was that the bulk of our content has been Right Hooks um, on Iron Rock's page. And so I'm kind of making a switch now to go and focus more on jabs. And I am the persona. I'm the voice of the company um, in the social space. And so I've created my own personal page, Christian Watt, J.A. And... I'm struggling with what to post. So I, I want to explain our, our, our thing at Iron Rock is to simplify insurance. It's a technical thing. People don't like it. People think we always rip you off. So my goal is I want to simplify it, explain the coverage, explain how it really works. Um, and when I've done a few of those videos on Iron Rock's page, the engagement is 10, 15, 20 times higher than any of the right hook uh, posts. Of course. So anything, yeah. So anything anything has, valuable, people like. Anything that's asking them for their money, people don't like. It's not complicated. Exactly. So, but I'm trying to, should I post them? So one quick question, should I post them as Iron Rock JA's page or as me, the general Both. manager? Both. Both. So post as me and then put it to the page as well. So trying to create it, it's, it's a bit stuffy. It's a bit boring sometimes. What kind of angle, that's my first general question, would be good to create engagement? Um, uh, it's about creativity. So for example, I would probably go to a jerk chicken stand and literally film it from there. And maybe even ask the person that's serving you, hey, like while you're doing your video, you're like, oh, by the way, 
do you have insurance? And, the, and of course, something funny is going to happen. They're going to say, I don't fucking, you know? It just, yeah. It's just making it more interesting, right? So the don't setting. do them sitting from my desk in my Correct. office. Correct, do no. not, okay. do not. Okay. You know, I think when people, think about how Facebook and Instagram work. If already behind you is a sunny jerk chicken stand, that's already more interesting. That's already more culturally relevant. Think about the other 500 things that matter to Jamaicans, whether, you know, whether it's landmarks or silly. So I think setting, a lot of times setting, the setting uh, is very powerful. Okay, okay. And my second question was something more specific. So I had an idea for a particular, uh, I guess, theme um, or hashtag that I wanted to create because everybody has this stigma for insurance. I wanted to create a conversation around the hashtag everyone hates insurance, but I'm like kind of nervous. You do. Because no, I don't know if what? we should be associated with a hashtag like that. Of course you a, should. Yeah. Of course you should. Because, you, because, the, because when you dig into it, it's, it's you're being empathetic to the consumer. Okay, right. You're right. aligning okay. yourself with the customer. Got it? And try and get the feedback from them as to why they hate, what's their issues, what's the problems. You're, you're, act, you're with them instead of being upset at them for hating insurance. Got you. Got you. Got you. Those are my two questions. Gary, I, I've been following you. Christian, for about two what, one other thing. Last thing. If you look at insurance success in Asia, in America, uh, in Europe, a lot of the yeah. things that work are irrelevance, right? Irreverence, excuse me, irreverence. So Geico or, you know, or progressive, like they're, the creative is around something that has nothing to do with insurance. So right. I think humor, something a little bit different. If you go make a video of you just being in your stodgy suit, running and yeah. like literally filming while you run in between a soccer, a football match on the beach with some kids or some people and just yeah. get their reactions, there's something there. Okay. You see where I'm going? Yeah, yeah, try and use humor and try and stay away from direct insurance. And something that has, like, doesn't make any sense. It's just a man in a suit running across a beach where people, and they're mad at you, and it just, it's, try shit, try shit. Yeah, okay. All right, right. awesome. Thank Thank you. you. You're welcome. Keep this going. Jamaica, Greece. We've gone really international today. Hello. What's your name? I'm Diana. It's nice to meet you. Diana, it's so nice to meet you. All right. What's your uh, question? So a little bit, uh, a little bit about me first. I am a university student in uh, Virginia. I study biomedical science, and I'm a Spanish minor. Um. My passion is in the medical field as well as with Spanish. So I'd like to make use of that. Um, I recently got an internship uh, in Colombia, the country, uh, and you know it's expensive to do it, but uh, that leads to my first question. Uh, how would you, like if you were in my position, how would you fund that trip? And I have a little bit of time to do it. Um. My, my favorite thing to push people towards is to sell something. You know, mm-hmm. I just, I think it's been remarkable for me over the last two years to see people that have gotten into flip culture. You know, like when I see the stuff even over your shoulder right now, like those cups up there and mugs, and you know, tchotchkes, I'm always like, do you still care about them? Are they yours? Are they your, you know, like, you know, like, you know, I always think in terms of like, you know, if one has the ability to sell, to buy something and sell it, uh, starting with the stuff laying around their house that they don't like anymore, and then going to Goodwill, garage sales, you know, thrift stores, buying bulk on eBay and selling it on Amazon, Diana, no, nothing, nothing accelerates creation of like revenue better than somebody not realizing they were good at flipping and selling stuff and then them trying it and being good at it. I mean, I see, I see people who started at zero six months ago, take screenshots of their eBay account showing me four, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve thousand dollars because they got good at it. So I don't know if that's in you. Some people are really bad at it and really don't like the process of it, but that would be number one. Um, number two, 
would be to, you know, really just add more on my back. So just good old fashioned grinding more, uh, another job while I am in university. That's just real talk. You know, like when you're in that position, um, you know, number three, just to go through all the variables, I would speak to every relative and play a borrow game, like straight up. Like I think too many kids ask for money instead of borrowing money. So going to like your great uncle and being like, yo, I will pay you back in two years, the 500 bucks. It would mean the world to me. I'm in a tough spot. I don't think there's anything wrong with borrowing money from relatives. You know, I wouldn't put a, I wouldn't put a stigma around that if you're feeling that stress, but you know, but really besides doing something that you can do for yourself to make money entrepreneurially, like the flipping, getting a job, just another job and saving a grind job, late night job, or borrowing money. Those are the three paths in this scenario, in my opinion. Okay. Have you ever sold anything on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or Macari? I don't have much to sell. Understood. How, do you have 20 bucks? Yeah, yeah, I just got paid today, so I have a little bit more than 20 bucks. You know, to me, there's a great story I got an email where somebody was in a very similar spot when I started talking about Flip Life. And they literally started with 20 bucks, literally. You know, you're in a little bit of a tough spot because we're in quarantine right now, but what they did was they went to Goodwill they went to some thrift stores. They bought like, I'm trying to remember the story, seven to 10 items. Um, they sold that on eBay and Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. They got, they made a hundred on that. They went back. It's just that process. It, it you know, that I'm very passionate about. Um, the, the less entrepreneurial version is just another fucking job or number three, just borrowing money. I mean, that's just, that's just, you know, there is not, not that many options. They fall mm -hmm. in the bucket of making it for yourself. You know, it, it, by the way, another way to make money is labor, not buying and selling. So maybe it is, you know, cutting hair. Maybe it is mowing lawns. Maybe it is like, like the reality is it's just grind life, you know? Okay. And, and then number four is taking a step back and saying, fuck, even though this opportunity for this internship in Colombia is so remarkable, I am not in a place right now where I can actually afford it. So let me go next year if to, uh, whether it's Colombia or Peru or somewhere else that maybe I could like, this is just not the right timing, even though fuck, I really want to. That's okay because you're a young woman and sometimes, you know, um, disappointment like that is the ignite to some of the other three things that I told you are options. Okay. I wish you well. I wish right. you well. And I have, thank you. I have two other questions as well, if that's okay. Okay, let's go quick. Okay, um, I want to start a nonprofit once I become established as a doctor um, and hopefully in one of the so-called third world countries. Thank you. And I was wondering if you had any advice as to how to start that. There's a, send me an email when this is done to Gary at Vayner Media. I'm going to send you two books. I'm on the board of uh, one, Pencils of Promise, and I'm a well member to Charity Water. Both of the founders, Adam and Scott, have written books that are just remarkable on how they started from zero, zero uh, as kids and started these massive nonprofits. I think you should read them. I'm going to send you both books. Thank you. So email me to Gary at Vayner Media and put your address in there and I'm going to send you both books. Okay. And then my last question is for my dad. He wants to be a uh, kind of an entrepreneur business owner. And I was wondering what advice would you have for him to start off? He's uh, almost 50 and, you know, been He's young. doing, yeah. He's young. Uh, you know what? I think the right answer there is I'm going to add five more books, all five business books that I've written. And I'm going to send it to him, tell him to start watching my content and other people's content. He needs to get educated on the modern moments of entrepreneurship and then decide to start a business around something he loves. That will work most. That is the highest likelihood to success. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dion. Thank you so much, Gary. Yeah. Gary at VaynerMedia. Put yeah, your address in there. Gotcha. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Tea with Gary B. Brought to you by this white mug. By the way, that's been funny. Been getting reached out by a lot of tea companies, a lot of mug companies for sponsorship. That's crazy. Ronnie. Yo, what's up, Gary? Life is good, bro. How are you? 
I'm doing great, man. I can't believe I'm on here talking to you. You are like next to my mom, my ultimate hero, man. Thank you so much for Thank everything you. you do. Where are you at? Super grateful. I'm in a town called New Braunfels, Texas, right between San Antonio and Austin. Understood. So, uh, man, my question really, I, I feel kind of like a couple of the other people you've talked to. Like, I'm so happy where I'm at in my life. I'm a videographer, photographer, social media practitioner here in my town, about 80,000 people. Um, you know, and I make content for small businesses, help them promote themselves on the internet. And that's what I love doing. The content creation is just, that's my passion. But, you know, for the past three years, I was able to also take some of your advice and create kind of like a hyper-local uh, news source on, you know, primarily Facebook and Instagram. It's gotten a lot of attention with the local community. I mean, they look to it for, you know, breaking news a lot of time. It's, it's business and entertainment oriented. It's not so much hard news. Um, but, you know, I find myself in a place where I've got this, this really loyal audience that's super engaged, a uh, ton of attention, and I have, you know, some friends and people that are, you know, colleagues in, in the same space that are always kind of encouraging me to figure out more ways to monetize that side of my business. You know, because the way I look at it is I've got the content creation side and the distribution side. And, you know, my passion is with the content creation. I'm not necessarily, I don't feel like I'm a businessman. I don't feel like I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, but I built this platform out and it kind of just provides a ton of value to the community and never and really- br and, and brings awareness to you that may lead to business on the other side. 100, absolutely. You, you are monetizing it. I am, your, yes. Your, your friends are looking at it one dimensional. For sure. I guess the only thing, the only reason I hesitate and they, they catch my attention when they say that is because, you know, like you always say, man, I feel like I've already won. I'm doing, you know, what I love to do. But that being said, like, you know, I would love to turn this into a real business instead of just a one man show. And have grow. you considered, have you considered bringing in a young hustler, Sarah or Rick, who really have hunger, who love the news or distribution side of things, who you might be able to give five to 49%, depending on how great you feel about them to really drive that side? I, I teamed up with a good friend of mine and we tried to do that 50, 50 for a little while. It didn't work out, but you know, I think just talking to you out and saying Here's, it out loud. Yeah. Makes, yeah. Just saying it out loud, just cause one thing didn't work out. Doesn't mean the next one can't. The other thing you can do is say, Hey, listen, let's, let's just, let's, let's role play. I'm, I'm Javier and you're, uh, I'm trying to, and you're, and you're, and I'm, actually you be Javier, I'll be you. And I'll be like, listen, Javier, listen, I really like, I really enjoyed our two meetings. I think you might be the guy. I love that you interned at CNN that year. I love that you've worked on local websites. Um, I had a really tough experience or not even tough. I had an experience that didn't work out with a former friend. I'm scared to give up equity for this baby because it's my baby, but I'm going to do what other startups do with you. Like if you're willing to take the risk, Javier, I, I hope you can tell that I'm a good guy. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to pay you a little bit in year one for it. But after six months, if it's working, then you can kick into getting 10% of it. But if it doesn't work after six months, you're going to have to trust me. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just trying to protect myself because right now I would say no, because I'm scared to give you 10% and then it to not work out. Um, and then I regret it. So just like it's called a cliff Javier in other startups where you work and until you hit one year, you don't get any equity. I'd like to cliff you for the first six months. If you go great, then you go. Your vulnerability is me trying to screw you or you're, or deciding that you weren't good enough, but that is what I'm offering. Mm -hmm. And I do have 20 other people that are interested, but I think you're my guy. I think that's the combo, Rodney. Yeah. Got it, man. Well, hey, Gary, again, man, honestly, more important than any question I can ask you, I just want to say thanks for everything that you do for our community, man. You're, you're the best. Rodney, I think that you should, thank you, brother. Uh, Rodney, I think you should reach out to every local business and do an interview right now with them on Zoom, on Instagram, record it. Like it, right now with all this downtime, if I'm hearing you straight, one-on-one -on -one interviews, five minutes on how they're getting through this, how they are, uh, give them one minute at the end speed round to promote their business. I would fucking make 25 of those a day if I were you. I would literally and put DM. That on, I would, and put that out on my channel to the community. I would go ham right now. I would go 24 hours breaking news AKA your version, 20 business interviews a fucking day. You don't need to edit them. You just record them and post them with a little copy. You do f four minutes on how you're handling it. What's your, you know, what are you thinking about? You know, I'd almost, I do in five minutes, two minutes on 
their background in the community, two minutes on how they're handling it, and one minute to promote their business, it would be such a public service. Yeah. I did that last week, like two or three times. People loved it, and then I just stopped. I mean, it just, it was a lot of work. The whole whole COVID-19 thing, covering some of this stuff, it just kind of drained me because it was kind of just super, you know, heavy for what I'm used to producing. I think you can go the other way. Let's go with optimism on it. You know, yeah. this is an optimist to make it optimistic, like lean it towards optimism. For sure. Awesome, brother. Talk Love to you. you. Thanks, Gary. Love you more. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. All right. Let's, um, let's keep going back to Twitter. If you're watching right now, let's, uh, time does fly. Time flies when you're listening. It's true. Like this is going super fun, fast and fun. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Love it. Hi. Hey, Vicky. Good to see you. Give me one second. Just trying to, Chris Volum, I'm going to follow you, my friend. I've been around a while. Vicky, great to see you. How are you doing? I'm well. Uh, I'm sure you're challenged with this, uh, with this uh, COVID because an ice cream store is not necessarily in the best position during this time. No, plus obviously we're in a tourism, what would normally be hot spot with spring break and obviously Clearwater hit the news because it was doing the wrong thing. So kind of all the mum and pop shops are absolutely challenged to, to do the right thing and keep it safe. We closed for a few days, which was absolutely dire because spring breaks when obviously we were hoping to put money back in the pot because we just spent all of our savings on the new store. So that obviously is going to take a long time to recover but yes. moving forward my concern is now obviously all the people that were going to come down this year for tourism are not going to come so there's when when it does finally get back to a little bit of normality with tourism we're still going to be at the back end of the queue to survive and um, we so say we've done curbside for the last three days which I wasn't sure initially it would work because I needed to work out a way that it could be safe. And we did minimum four pint ice cream deal, prepay by invoice. When you arrive, call us, it gets brought out. So we, we kind of, all the friction, that was amazing because we just managed to bring in some money. But obviously that's a short term stop to getting anywhere near close to what we should be doing. You know, unfortunately, and I've been thinking about you because I saw you on social a little bit. And, um, you know, so it was on my mind. I was like kind of like racking my brain. Unfortunately, you know, it's the same thing with all my restaurant friends in New York. Um, there's only so much you can do. You know, we, you know, we've lost some clients on the Vayner side that are selling clothes, right? And just their, their you know, the retail clothes and just like even the online clothes players are not doing well because that's just not what people are thinking about right now and so um you know unfortunately also having a seasonal business where it's not like you know you open and we're just back to our building back up to our normal main and it's just all the same the reality is is no different than a hurricane no different than a war no different than you know an earthquake you know that should that takes down a highway and then hurts all those businesses uh, in New York, no different than when they decide to put up a subway station and they close one side of the street and you're on that side of the street. There are, this is what's so scary and real about entrepreneurship. Sometimes there is no answer. And, and that doesn't mean give up. What it means is you can only do what you can do. And I think one of the reasons Vicky, and I know you watch a lot of the content, the story time thing is the thing that I'm most focused on right now because it's the one thing that everybody can control. The trials and like just, you know, the reality is putting out content about the stories or about the product or you came, how you came up with the recipes is really at some level besides the promotion of curbside for you are really the two options that you have to actually attack. Other than that, we're at the mercy of like the reality of the situation. I think I think as well the hardest thing for me is having obviously come from the UK to the US and obviously every single bit of savings and we saved for three years we had a, a nice pot of money which was just saved because I knew we would have to move locations so then to have that pot of money and put 90k in to the new store and then be looking at my bank account and going shit like I've got staff to, to think about 
and the backstop that I've had for 16 years of retail in London and the US for the first time in my life at the worst possible point I don't have that kind of fallback to I mean I mean I've got amazing staff all the young kids live at home and they're all right don't worry about us which is great I've got one full-time member of staff which obviously um, um, her and I are kind of clinging to record what we can to kind yes. of keep it going but of course like everybody else being an immigrant our visa is due for renewal this year so we also have to at some point go back to London uh, and obviously show the embassy that we're worthy to be able to stay in the US for another five years so it's it's a challenge for immigrants. The, the, good, the good news there is my intuition on the re-up on the five years the, the COVID scenario is probably going to help you I think a lot of people are going to get passes based on that so yeah. I, I, I would argue that that will probably work out. Um, I would also argue that this is a real challenge. And I think, you know, much like we talked when you were in New York at the 40s, like I still think an ice pack d- direct to consumer, not just relying on your local area is something that you're gonna have to consider. Shipping ice cream in pints around the country is something you have to consider. It's just something you have to consider. I would, pro- I would spend a lot of time right now on the packaging. You know what I'd probably do if I were you? I'd probably, and you might've done this already. So this is more general information for people. I'd probably order five to seven pints of ice cream from people who do ship around the country just to see how they ship it. You know, what did they, you know, I, we're, we're launching a food version of wine text called yummy text. We actually already have. Um, and we're, we're doing a lot of that right now because we have a lot of soft cheese. We don't want it to melt, you know, that kind of stuff. But I really think Vicky, like I, re- and I, I, and you've become my friend through this process. I will, I rarely do this, but I would absolutely give awareness to you would really promote it. If you like, I really think you have to have a meaningful direct to consumer national shipping ice cream model. And you have to make sure it doesn't melt from clear water to San Jose. I think that's the biggest challenge because obviously you're reliant on the carriers and you're also reliant on the airlines. And we did look at it before and there's a kind of whole host of, you have to get nutritional content on on each thing and obviously all the allergies and stuff. And that's where I kind of fell down because the nutritional content is like, then it's expensive because it all has to get sent away to kind of work out. So, um, I, I mean, I just, only... I, ju- I just don't think, I, I, I don't know all those details, but I can tell you right now, some things are required for long-term success. I, I couldn't be more passionate of you figuring out how to ship ice cream. Yeah. I just could, I couldn't, period. And maybe, you know, when I hear what you're saying, I'm like, man, I hope they didn't make it more complicated than it actually is. Like, I would just really, I would really recommend ordering five from five different places that do ship ice cream to your home right now and like reverse engineer how they did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate all your help and uh, Thanks, Vicky. support. I wish you well. All right. Good luck. Take care, everyone. Vicky, dire- direct to consumer ice cream. I will help you. I will, I will put out two to three pieces of content, which there you go. You just saved $80,000 in marketing promotion. I will do that for you because I want to, but I really want you to take it serious. You need to get some of that coffee ice cream. I, you know how much I love it. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. You know, some circumstances are just more challenging than others. You know, um, you know, Vicky's ice cream, the last two, right? D doesn't have anything to sell in her house. You know, I'm like, hey, sell stuff in your house. She's like, oh, got shit, right? And ice cream in a town in Florida, like that's seasonal. That doesn't, you know, there's some real tough situations out there, but we're going to fight and look for angles and keep chipping away. Let's keep going on tea with Gary B. Hey, what's up, Gary? How are you, brother? Good, good. I appreciate you having me on today. Happy to do it. Um, I just want to say thank you because uh, back in 2018, uh, when you had your Crusher book signing, um, I was one of the people that came out and uh, you ended up uh, signing this for me. And uh, I remember you stuck around like you were trying to get out for your family and you ended up like literally staying like an hour over just to like get everybody through. So I, that means the world. Thank you for seeing that. Hey, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so I guess I just had a um, couple questions for you. Um, so I do fashion photography in, Love it. in New York. And uh, basically, um, hold on. 
no yes. worries. I've decided to go like niche, you know, because I've um, over the years kind of like perfected what my craft is and um, it's I've decided to go into fashion. And uh, I guess, do you have any advice like for me, like going forward? Like, is there anything I could do differently? Like, What do you want to happen to build brand awareness around yourself so that people book you? Pretty much. Yeah. More brand stuff. Yeah. For um, um, all like different brands. You know, I think a signature, when I hear that, I think a signature play, like a podcast or a YouTube show, I'm a very big believer in a signature product. And then you build from all the concept from there. I mean, even look what I'm doing right now. It's very meta. Even this downtown, I'm, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to create something signature. Tea with Gary Vee. And then all of it's going to stream from that. It's how I started Wine Library TV. It's how, you know, my whole world has gone. So I think, look, you're trying to build awareness that you're good at something or get known in a sector. So let me explain how this works. If you start a, you know, a fashion, if you started, uh, let me go very niche here. Um, fashion in social weekly brought to you by Lawrence Crookston, right? Right? Like if that's the show, literally if you named it that show and then emailed and LinkedIn messaged 50 of the top fashion designers in the world or fashion CEOs or fashion creative directors, 50, the 50, I'm talking top people, you would be blown away. You have nobody watching your show. You would be blown away that two of them would say yes to be a guest. Now, why that's important, Lawrence, is now all of a sudden you're on the phone for 35 minutes, 45 minutes, or in person for 45 minutes with a chief creative officer of Stuart Weitzman. And when you're done, that person's like, oh, thanks for having Like, so what do you do? And you're like, oh, I'm actually a fashion. You see where I'm going? You're putting yeah. yourself in a position to network through bringing value. That's how I think about it. Okay, so literally like name it like Fashion and Weekly with Lawrence come up yeah come up with something you know like this week in fashion is very generic but maybe this week in new york fashion is niche enough and so you've limited yourself to new york fashion but at the same token there's fucking thousands of people you need to meet in new york fashion you so you'll probably never get to everybody in your pod you see where i'm going yeah like um even like what i do is around like new york fashion week i'll literally like i i work a, like my day job where i like make coffees and sandwiches and stuff so I'll, I'll get up early in the morning, hit up fashion. We get on the streets and meet like influencers and uh, editors and, and kind of build relationships like that and then go do my day job and then, you know, go home and edit all the photos and try to build those connections. I think hosting a podcast around the industry that, I mean, you call it fashion photographer weekly, you know, with like, I like it going macro because I want you to invite the most important people and get, once you get five of them, two of them, you can get anybody. And all of a sudden your podcast is why you're booking, you know, more photography because you're letting them talk about their business. And it's like, a, it's a, like a good trade. You're giving them a platform, even though nobody's listening at first, people still love giving interviews. And what you're getting is awareness and networking capabilities that may lead to something. Okay. Awesome. Hey, I really appreciate that. That's great. You got it, Liz. Hey, thank you. You got it, brother. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, Dallas Barnes just followed you. Thank you for sharing a screenshot. If you're watching right now, take a screenshot of this and post it on your Twitter and, uh, and let everybody know what you're watching. And I'm trying to get some more people in here to watch because it's super fun. And I think we're bringing a lot of value. And I'm also looking to do some fun stuff. So I see that Luke Churchill here has me in his profile. So I just liked his. I appreciate that, Luke. It was nice meeting you the other day. Um, Isabel Star Stark, appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for that. I'm really appreciative of that. Dustin, I'm ready for the next one. Hi, Ashley. Hey, Gary. How are you? Well, I'm super uh, nervous, excited. <laughs> Good, don't be nervous and just be excited. So what can Thank I help you with? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, part of my thing was just doing this. Um, I've been Good. sort of hiding out for a while and uh, what better way to <laughs> break the ice. Yeah. 
Where Where do you live? I used to do a lot of video and I used to do a lot of lives and uh, went through some challenging times. And then now I, I work, I do a lot with video right now, but not in front of camera. So good um, for you. Well, I'm glad you did it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm just, I'm just so incredibly impressed with you and your kindness, like just listening to everything that you're doing for, for everyone, just all of these callers. It's just, it's just such a true act of just kindness. And I just want to call that out first. Thank you for saying that. Um, so my thing is, um, it's such an interesting moment. I'm, I'm both oddly inspired and excited and equally sad and, you yeah. know, holding the compassion in my heart for what people who are having hard moments are experiencing right now. I feel but exactly also, the same way. And, and also at the same moment, it's like that excitement for truth. Yes. For and, this and, and opportunity and truth yeah. and, and, and for pause, you know, pausing is powerful. And I think a lot of people are going to get in their heads in a different way. And I do think gratitude is going to emerge for many. And, and I think cynicism for others, you know, a lot of people are going to, who are insecure and who are cynical are going to be like, see, I just was on the verge of having it all figured out. And then Corona came. This is a half glass empty, half glass full moment. No question. Yeah. So for, so for me, I, I was, I was literally right before this was happening, I was sort of re- looking at for myself, um, sort of the opportunity that presented itself um, was I have an eye for uh, capturing video and, and really understanding like these nuggets and, and these, these powerful two, three minutes of content. And, um, and a couple of years ago, I actually, I actually developed a video business card. And uh, I, I created, you know, I had 50 people go through it. And, and so it was called VidBits. So I was super excited and I was about to sort of take flight. And then, um, unfortunately my father who was ill at the time, uh, it was time to go home and be with him. So that, that took precedence. So, um, when I got back from that, it's like, I just couldn't get going. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't find it. Myself after many years of working for myself in different businesses, like, okay, I guess I got to go work for someone else right now. I just don't have it in myself. And that's okay. I mean, and, I, and, it, and it was because it, it brought me to some really interesting opportunities and I got good. to learn some new things, Good, which has been great. And now I've, you know, this year has been great. I've been getting back. And, and so here I am now in this other place with, these sort of video nuggets and these, and, and I was like, Oh wow, I actually have a business name VidBits. And I'm talking about small pieces of content and um, I actually have a team that can create them. <laughs> so um, it just started falling into place and I'm, I'm doing them currently. And, but then this happened and it's like, well, you know, is it, is it the moment? Is it the, you know, just, how I should show up in this moment, how I so, should I guess, so present myself is the question. Yeah, I think, Ashley, I think the biggest thing is a relationship with time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the reality is if it is or isn't the moment, I don't view that as some huge, if it's not the moment, I don't view that as some huge negative because the reality is within six months or 12 months, it might be the moment. And of course, you know, we all have to cherish every moment we're on the earth and you never know what can happen tomorrow, but knock on wood, there's a likely chance that you've got a good 40 in you years. And, and, and I think, and I think, you know, when you actually contextualize that, I think that's, you know, your natural entrepreneurship, because you went that way, your own, your own time clock on ideology, like, should you be working for somebody else or should you not your own ambition, uh, an ideology of like who you are and what you are and and should you be doing this or not? The reality is, and this is a very powerful answer. It's funny like how I feel about this answer. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Do, you know, like like me, what I mean by that, and it's really powerful and I'm, I'm starting to realize why so much works for me, whether I'm right or wrong, whether it leads to the next great thing or it literally becomes the seed of my 
ultimate financial demise, it really is all gonna be okay. Like, like what, you know, like, and I mean it. I, I really am very passionate about perspective, right? To your point, going through a father, did your dad pass? Yeah. My mom's watching right now, so big shout My out mom. to her right now. Big shout out to mom. Like, like you know, like, I'm, I'm sure your dad had lots of thoughts about life the whole way. And then like, ultimately, like what, right? Like, like we just live. And so like, I just wanna encourage you to realize there is no wrong answer. I mean that. I really believe that because I always tell people, I'll give, I'll give you a good example. Somebody really in my inner circle broke down with COVID inner circle, solid acquaintance to maybe borderline friend. Right. And you know, like a, a friend, a friend. Um, I was just right there. I did it like, you know, like really like went and I was like, and, and I was talking to him and I said something that really swung him. And I, and I say it a lot. If you really follow me, I don't say it that often, but if you follow me, you've heard this. I said, look, bro, I get it. But like, let's just role play for a second. Let's take a step back and reframe our perspective. Let's say this didn't happen. COVID didn't happen. And let's say you would have gone to that pitch that would have gotten you this money that he's talking about. I'm like, let's just say they even said yes. And then let's say, that you were happy and on the phone and calling your wife after and saying you're getting the money and you weren't paying attention and you literally, literally got hit by a fucking car across the street in Chicago and died. I'm like, you do understand that that's possible. You do understand that, th you know, for all the deaths that are gonna come from this disease, there are gonna be handfuls, hundreds, if not thousands of people around the world who this actually saved their life because they wouldn't have gone to that restaurant and choked on that chicken bone because they wouldn't have gone on that flight where they would have gotten the radioactiveness that led to their cancer. Like, I actually believe that, Ashley. And I, and I think, oh. and when I say it doesn't matter, what I mean by that is we all do our best in trying to make decisions. But if we actually realized the ones that may seem like bad decisions on paper up front actually led to being great decisions seven years later, there's something that I'm able to do through my DNA upbringing and perspective and now practice and is just realizing you got to give things time to figure out if they were right or wrong. And everybody like wants to judge everything so short. You see what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally get that. And I, I really, I feel like I've, I've learned to practice that more and more, especially in the last couple of years, just good. You know, that patience. Yeah. And, um, and gratitude, right. Uh, Even for the, I mean, every day, you know, everyone's like, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. I'm like, you and I are talking right now because of modern technology. If this happened in 1987, like like that, that, you know, that we would have missed out on a ton of human interaction that really, right now people are getting their fix on human interaction. Look what we're doing. I'll give you one, Ash. I'll give you one. Let's go very meta. I might've said something in the right way at the right moment to you now that will bring you value. There's no fucking way I'm doing tea with Gary Vee if there was no COVID. I'd be in a meeting right now in New York. <laughs> right. That's, we need to understand that life is, unbelievably complex and layered and we need to lean into optimism and gratitude and whether it's time for bits or not i just think that you should think that every decision is right and i think most people think every decision is wrong hmm. like most people just go into like did i make the right decision they, there's just this unbelievable ability to beat oneself up to be cynical to be pessimistic to be fear-based and i'm just trying to get people to flip it because life is actually how it plays out in your head it just actually is like I, my ability to turn every negative into a positive is very real. And, and I watched many people taking positives and turning into negatives. It's very real. Life is a perspective game and we need to have more positive optimism. The end. 100%. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so, so much, much, Gary. I appreciate your time. Bye. And this Bye, has just been an incredible experience just watching Thank these you. every morning. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Take care. Man, that was fun. I really believe in that shit. I really, really, really do. Rock Dance Theater, thank you so much for sharing. Mike Turner, thank you for tea with Gary Vee. You get a, you get a follow. Hey, Mike Turner, I'm going to reply to you right now. Do you drink wine? This is me asking you because then I want to tell you to sign up for winetext.com. If you're watching right now and if you've gotten value out of these, you know, tea with Gary Vee's and you drink wine, winetext.com. Bianca. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh. I'm good. I'm so excited. I've been up since 5 a.m. my time, hoping to be on. You're Tom amazing. from Seattle. Are you Seattle, yeah. West Coast? How are you? Yes, I'm good. Um, good. so 
my question is, um, obviously for the first time I'm um, laid off and all of the not enough time problems have kind of gone away, um, but have Which also been a little bit paralyzing because mm -hmm. now I'm like, I have all these ideas and I'm like, don't know where to go first. So I've kind of narrowed it down to two like main ideas. Um, I'm a dance teacher and I have this idea of like a like online dance program for beginners but yep. my kind of where my heart wants to go is more into like a coaching business. Um, mm -hmm. Last summer I did a leadership program it kind of just shifted my whole world and so I got a lot of practice and experience coaching and I would love to just yeah, I'm, go go. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a direct tangible prescription because it's so obvious to me. You ready? Yes. I would like you to do some I want you to start a Facebook group and I want you to start a Zoom session and literally spam and I'm using spam as kind of like a slang term. I want you to post on your Facebook and your Instagram that you're going on Zoom and you are inviting people. And if you'd like you to come on and just shoot the shit with me, and we're going to talk about leadership and, and mm -hmm. thought and mindset. I want you to go, I want you to go into action. I want you to go directly into doing what I'm doing with T with Gary V, but I want you to do it in a group setting. I want you to get five, 10, 15 people into a zoom and literally just shoot the shit or a Google hangout or whatever works for you. So I literally want you to start doing it. You have a hypothesis okay. in your heart. Like just go and just shoot the shit about life or whatever. I also need you desperately to make two dance videos on TikTok every single day. I had a feeling you were gonna say that. <laughs> Bianca, I'm telling you, it's very real. What people don't, like as you were thinking, people are crippled by, I have 10 ideas. People are crippled by, I've narrowed it down to two, which one's the right one. And what people don't understand is in today's internet, the answer is yes, and both, and. The answer is and. Like yeah. literally by this afternoon in seven hours, in 10 hours, you should have two TikTok dance videos. And in your profile, it should say dance teacher with your email. And okay. at six o'clock at night tonight, you know, which would be nine on the East Coast, you should be doing a little wine, happy hour, leadership mindset, like kind of little jam session that you're the fucking queen bee of, that you're leading. Here's the topic, here's the okay. questions. And literally, in 24 hours, you've now started the process of figuring out the right answer through action, not through debate. Got it. Yeah. So you, you would suggest just like getting a group of people on Facebook is what I'm hearing. And then coming up with kind of like a format beforehand and just like some questions maybe to throw out or yeah, I guess I, like I, I, I get kind of lost in the mechanics of it, you know? Yeah. I'm going to get you unmechanic get seven to 10 people into a Google Hangout because I want them to be physically on there. Post on your Facebook, post on your Instagram, email your entire address book and be like, I'm doing a leadership, a free leadership seminar. I know a lot of us are bored. I'm getting on FaceTime, grab your cup of coffee, grab a glass of wine. And then when you get there, just talk. Okay. I mean, it's very easy. The first one's like, <laughs> How, yeah. how's everybody? Literally, you're like, how's everybody getting through this? That's a good starting yeah. point. You know what I mean? Okay. And then tell everybody why you're, I mean, literally be like, hey, nine hours ago, Gary Vee was yelling at me on T with Gary Vee to do this. That's why it's happening. And then tell them what happened a year ago, how much you loved it and why you're doing it. Just start shooting the shit, conversate. Okay. Listen to me, making and doing is the only answer. And everybody plays life in their head. And I want yeah. everybody to play their life in life. I love it. I love it. Because because both of your good debates, you're going to have, if you do what I just said to you every day for two weeks here, you're going to have a much better feel of which one. What if it was actually dancing and it was about TikTok explosion and getting virtual dance classes and getting rates that you never could have imagined and maybe you loved it more um, and maybe in that dance class, you do do some leadership and mindset and life coaching. Mm -hmm. And they like, so you got to do to, you got to taste, you got to try, you got to make, you got to do. Yeah. And everyone just sits in their room and thinks and ponders. <laughs> yes. Totally relatable. I, yeah. I, everybody ponders and I want everybody to play, right? I want everybody got to it. play, do more playing, less pondering. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love your suggestion because 
because I get kind of lost in that details, I, I don't always connect like the way to just get out there and try something because I get so lost in the like the most people are in steps because most people are insecure and think they need to have it right to do it. Mm. It's, it's the manifestation of insecurity. Right. Well, and I'm really, I really appreciate your work because you've definitely helped me shift out of that. Good. Like Let's I'm do more. definitely more willing to just like post things and just kind of see if people like it or not. And so I really, That's right, really because appreciate Bianca, your work for that. Because, because their opinions don't matter. Like, fuck them. If they say you yeah. suck, fuck them. <laughs> Fully. It's true. <laughs> Fully. It's true. It's true. Like, yeah. okay, cool. Sorry, Randy, the mailman, you think I'm an idiot? Cool. Like, see, like <laughs> sorry, yeah. Aunt June. I'm sorry, Aunt June, that you think this is silly. You go worry about your fucking cat. You know, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like what? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank see you ya. so much. You're welcome. Take care. All right. Getting towards the end of another episode of Tea with Gary V. Valerie is in the building. Hey, Val. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can. Awesome. I'm also from Seattle, so I feel like I'm very I love similar. It. Anka, yeah. This is so great that we have this opportunity. Like our grandparents would never have been able to do this, right? So That's I'm true. just loving this right now. You're providing so much value to everyone, and I just I'm I'm super stoked. So thank uh, you. Yeah, I have been listening to you and been really inspired. And um, my passion, kind of similar actually to Bianca, um, I work in the corporate um, world and nonprofit healthcare. And I would love to kind of get in the space of um, being like a consultant for different businesses and employee engagement, like via positive psychology. So, yeah. similar question how would you do that? Like, how would you begin to scale that? Obviously, LinkedIn is like, my game right now, but I'm a little concerned of like posting on there um, just because I'm currently at an employed. So, um, so I think, I think, I think, but I actually think you can get away with it. And the way you do that is by making it as general thought sharing more so than hire me to do this. You're just building your awareness and you're just sharing okay. your thoughts on these issues. You're almost, yes. you're almost journaling you know, you're almost sharing. Okay. And that's not like threatening to my current. Purpose. It may be. It may be. <laughs> it may be. So you see. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. The problem is then you're out of options, right? Like, like the way to do it is one of yeah. a couple of ways. One, the way to actually build up demand is through creating the content that leads to awareness. To your point, if that's detrimental to your org, look, the reality is, is that most, if you can make it general enough, most orgs, most companies have a very unique relationship with their employees. Unfortunately, most companies wanna keep their employees in jail. I, on the other hand, am desperate to build up the profiles of my employees. James Orsini, Nick Dio, Claude Silver, DRock. Like I want them yeah. to build up their profiles because I think that's karma and the world is abundant. And if they feel that they can do better outside of my four walls, I want that for them. I don't want to suppress them. I have empathy that that might not be the case for your situation, but I think the more general and non-threatening you go, the if you're not asking for business, then you're just building awareness around the subject matter. And then if they're just super cynical, then you may have to deal with that. Right. So I guess a follow-up question for you is how do we get more leaders to be influential in a way that you are? How do we incorporate more positivity and um, you know, the leadership that you bring to the team, in your opinion? I think we find the ones that are naturally are in it because a lot of people aren't. Many leaders right. lead with fear. And yes. I don't think we're gonna be able to change, I don't think we're gonna be able to change them overnight. I think we can okay. move the ball down the field and have them debate. But I think the way we do it is actually triple down on the people that have it naturally in them and build awareness towards them, right? Like for example, yes. I think there's a lot of 24 year olds who had it in them who because they now look up to me will do more of it than they would have had I not existed. And I feel like that's a legacy that I'm proud of. Right, right. So kind of capitalize on those ones that are the rising stars or that are doing it already and just go big on that. Okay. That's right, Val, because most people's intuition is to try to change the person right. that is the leader 
but too much parenting, too much DNA, too much culture, too much old dogs, new tricks. You could get them from being a zero to a three on the positivity and opt, you know, thing. Yeah. Whereas, whereas, but that would take years. Whereas you right. could take somebody from a natural four to a 10 by just giving them encouragement. Okay. And then should I also be posting on, I mean, obviously other platforms as well, but do you have other techniques to kind of get myself out there? Content creation, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so funny Val. it's kind of like, you know, it is content creation. Is it doing a podcast where you start yeah. by interviewing yes. all the bosses in your own company, which maybe I started you doing account. that already. Yeah. I'm proud okay. of you. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it, what I don't think people understand is I say this a lot. I think I can tell that you're paying attention. It is like, it is like exercise and, yes. and eating well. The, the formula to being in shape is actually remarkably scary simple. <laughs> the, the discipline to execute is hard. Right. My model is very simple. I think you should produce content on every single platform in the world. And I think that you should do it every single day. And every waking hour. And when you do a podcast that it should be recorded and post produced. It's why I put out those decks, those, you know, slides. Yes, you know, I love those. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, just search Gary V deck or Gary V content model on Google. You'll find it. The, the formula is real. The discipline to do it is hard. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you so much and the world is you more. so much right now. So thank you. Thanks, um, love, your thank you. love your content. Thank you, Bill. Seattle back to back. I like that. I like that. Cody, what's good? What's up, Gary? Life is good. You? Uh, hanging in there, getting into online classes and getting adept into that. <laughs> It is, uh, it is definitely an intense, uh, an intense variable. Is it, uh, are you like enjoying it or is it like suck? Um, there's one class that is a little difficult to kind of understand, but he's kind of uh, splitting up into different sections, trying to make it simpler. And then everything else seems to be smooth sailing right now. I'm actually using Zoom. I've never used Zoom before until this semester. So I was glad to get to know it because now look where I'm at. I get to use it and talk to you. <laughs> That's awesome. What can I help you with, brother? Yeah. So um, in the recent years, I know that you have uh, emphasized on looking up like your, where you live on Instagram and seeing the top five posts and interacting with them. The problem is with my area, I live in Iowa, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and my posts don't really consist of like creating content. It's like really random posts. I don't really know how to describe them. So what do you suggest? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, well, what are you trying to accomplish? I would like to get myself out there to be, I'm, I'm starting to be uh, an information technologist in the computer support specialist degree, but I also like to do videography. So I was thinking if I could put myself out there with uh, making videos, I could help people around my town make a video. I understand. Yeah, for their businesses or whatever it is that they do. So I think you should put out videos on your account. Mm -hmm. And then I think you should DM all the businesses that have an Instagram account in your area. And you should give them a pointer or two. Don't tell them that you could do videos for free. I mean, you can say I'll do videos for free because I think that would work uh, mm -hmm. to some of them. But I, you definitely shouldn't say, hey, why don't you hire me to make a video? You need a video. Yeah. What, you sh what you should do is say, Let me, let's role play. I'll write the email. Uh, Dear uh, Iowa Steel Curtains, uh, Iowa Curtains, uh, hope all is well. Was just stumbled on your Instagram account. I know a little bit about content and social. I noticed on your Instagram account, this is the DM you're writing them, Cody. I noticed yeah. on your Instagram account, you didn't link your website in your Instagram profile. You should definitely do that because anybody that sees one of your photos will then click to it. That's very basic. Mm -hmm. They might, I would assume 90% of people will have their URL there, but that would be an example. You could say, dear Iowa fried chicken, you know, uh, hope all is well. Hope you're doing well with this COVID. Hope your business is okay. Uh, I'm Cody. I happen to know a lot about content and social. I stumbled on your page and I happen to notice that you do get 30 to 40 comments per post but I've looked back in the last year of your content and you've never replied to anybody. 
if you reply, you'll build a much stronger community, which will probably help you sell a lot of chicken. Also, I noticed you've done a lot of pictures. You should start mixing in some video. If Cody, if you do that, if you make your, if you put out content on your profile mm. and, you, and you go DM businesses in your area, if your hope is to get them to hire you to do videos for them, but you don't sell to them, but you provide them a free five minute social media audit and DM them, I guarantee three of them, oh, if you DM 50 people a week, 100 people a week, I guarantee three of them will become clients of yours. I really believe in that. Got it, awesome. Understood? Yep, awesome. Awesome, man, good luck. Talk yep. to you soon. Yep, thanks Gary. All right, I gotta steal three minutes back for prepping for this 11 a.m. call. So this was another episode of Tea with Gary Vee. I hope you guys can join me tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. Tell all your West Coast friends to wake up at 5.45. Uh, would love a barrage of feedback on today's episode on, uh, on Twitter. My team is gonna be chopping this up. It would mean a lot to me if you went to Twitter right now and said what your favorite part was. That might lead to uh, some observations for me and the team, and it would show me all the faces and accounts that have been watching this morning. So please go to Twitter. Gary VEE is my Twitter handle. If you don't have a Twitter account and you're watching this, please set up a Twitter account. Go to Twitter right now and set up a Twitter account. You need a Twitter account, period. Um, and that's that. So wish you well. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Dustin, thank you so much for your help on the ones and twos. My pleasure. Um, and we will talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye, everyone.